Turn with me to the book of Romans. We're going to be reading in the 8th uh, chapter. Romans 8 and 35. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul writing here, and I can't think of anyone who went through much more as far as in the New Testament than the Apostle Paul did. Amen. So when the Apostle Paul writes that all things work together for good, for them that love God and are called according to His purpose, yeah. uh, he's not talking from his mansion on the hill and he's never had any problems. Amen? Come on. This is a man that was beaten and left for dead. This was a man that had been stripes laid on his back. He had been shipwrecked. He'd been on an island with some cannibals. Right. Snake bit. Amen. Amen. He had been forsaken by some of the brethren because some of them couldn't wrap their mind around the fact that Paul could actually be used of the Lord because they knew him when he was Saul. Yeah. Amen. Come on. How many people know that God can use anybody? Right. Amen. Amen. How many people know that you can't be a big enough sinner for God not to change you? Amen. Right. You can go down an old-fashioned altar, an alcoholic bound by alcohol, and get up sober. Amen. 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 And never want another drop of it. Right. You don't have to go to Alcoholics Anonymous and stand up and say, I'm an alcoholic, I'll always be an alcoholic, because you don't have to be. Yeah. Amen. Oh, you don't have to always be an alcoholic. Right. You don't always have to crave the alcohol. Amen. Right. Right. And let me drop this in while we're out here. Come on. If you claim to be a born-again Christian and you still have it in your fridge, go home and pour it out. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Because when you get a hold of what we get a hold of, yeah. you won't need no more Bud Light. You have, you'll be full of the light. Amen. 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 So Paul knew what it was like to be in the perils of brethren. He knew what it was like to be tortured and to be criticized and to be beaten. And he had a rough time of it. Amen? Yes, sir. So whenever he tells you something, like I've learned that whatsoever state I'm in, uh -huh. they're with to be content. Right. He wasn't talking about, you know, well, the money's just a little low this month. We're going to have to make do. Come on. He was talking about being without a place to lay his head. Right. He was talking about being without a friend. He was talking about being with, forsaken by some of the brethren. Amen? Right. Has some of the brethren ever forsook you before? Amen? Amen? So Paul knew what it was like, Brother Bill, to go through things. He wasn't one of these prosperity preachers that lives in the million dollar home. Amen? Come on. And takes your money to buy an air conditioner for his doghouse. Yeah. The Apostle Paul wasn't that kind of preacher. Amen? Amen. He had been through a lot of things. Right. He knew what it was like to have your notes blow away. Amen. Wow. <laughs> but if you look with me, we find the Apostle Paul here in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, Come on. 35th verse, <laughs> talking about the love of God in Christ Jesus. Right. Now, fast all of you out here today, you'd probably say, you know the Lord loves you. Mm -hmm. You know that God loves you. Yeah. And most people that you stopped on the street corner, not all of them, of course, but I would think more than... 50% would say that they knew that God loved them. But right. Even those, Brother Dave, that believe in God's love Amen. at times have found themselves in situations in life that caused them, Brother Bob, to question. Yeah. That caused questions to come into their mind. Well, God, where are you at in all of this? Right. Amen. I'm sure that the tornado that took out the schoolhouses in the town of Moore, Oklahoma, I'm sure there were some people scratching their head wondering, God, where are you at? And all of this. Amen. Amen. True. But Paul wanted God's people to know that regardless of what happened, mm -hmm. regardless of what you face, right. regardless of what you go through, mm -hmm. God's love remains the same. Amen. Amen. God loves you as much now as He will ever love you. Right. You cannot do anything to make God love you more. Come on. Amen. Come on, you can't be if you if you might be able to make yourself a better person. Yeah. But God will still love you the same. Amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Guess what? That was wrote for you before you was even born. Right. Let alone what kind of person you are today. Amen. Now we find it easy to love some people because they love us. Amen. Yeah. Some people's a little harder to love like Johnny there. You know I force myself but I do love Brother Johnny. Amen. Come on. But sometimes it's hard for you to love people. Right. God don't have that problem. 
Amen. Amen. True. God don't have any problem loving the drunk. That's right. On Skid Row. Amen. Covered in his own vomit, drinking his breakfast from a brown paper sack. God loves him. Right. Jesus died for him. Right. We can, I don't know, I, I, I can't explain this. Come on. Amen. I want to preach to you about a subject for just a few minutes that I can't explain to you because I don't understand it myself. Yeah. I told the congregation last Sunday morning, when I try to find out why God loves me, yeah. I walk away scratching my head wondering even more why he does. Amen. Because I wouldn't put up with Billy Douglas. Amen. I wouldn't love me, but God loves me. Amen. And Paul wanted God's people to know that, Brother Johnny, no matter what you go through, right. God's love is constant. Amen. People change. Family changes. Your mom and daddy may not love you or you may not think they do today. Your family may have walked away. Your church family may have, may have stabbed you in the back and walked away. But God's love remains constant. Amen. His love never changes. Right. Whether you're in the valley or whether you're on the mountaintop, God loves you. Amen. Amen. That's right. Somebody say, God loves me. God loves me. Amen. God, see, the enemy will tell you God don't love you. Right. When you're going through things, he'll say, where's that God at you've been testifying about? Brother Bill, when you're laying over there and you, and you, you have a heart attack and, and it seems like you know, you're know you going down for the count, yeah. the enemy will whisper to you, where's God at now? Uh, I thought God's going to raise you up. By the, whenever that dear sister was laying there and the doctors walk in and they shake their head, uh, the enemy will whisper, where's God at now? God was still there. His love was still constant. His love is boundless. It is unending. Amen. God loves you. Amen. I know you can't believe that. Some of us, because we think we're just not lovable. Yeah. There are people today, prostitutes, standing on the street corners. Yeah. And they think God can't love them. All right. They're the reason He died. Amen. They're the reason that He died on the cross. You may be an alcoholic today. You think God can't love me. Oh, God loves you with a love that we can't explain. Amen. So Paul's getting ready to talk about some things that we go through. I like the Apostle Paul. He brought it down on the level that we can understand. Right. It's not hard. It's not hard for us to figure this out because we can relate to this. What's he say in 8 and 35, Romans? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us yeah. from the love of Christ? And then he goes on to say some of the things that you may think today, well, that for sure will separate me from God. That will, that will for sure separate His love. Will stop His love for me. Yeah. Verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation... How many people know something about tribulation? Amen. Yeah. Shall distress... How many people know something about distress? Amen. I've never seen so many people downcast and depressed as it is the day we live in. Right. Amen. Come on. Will persecution... Will famine... How about nakedness? How about peril? And then he brings it all the way down to death. He says, what about sword? Yeah. Well, the sword, see, Paul would, I don't know exactly the time frame of, one of you Bible scholars could probably tell me, from the time that he writes this to the time that he makes the walk to Nero's chopping block. But Paul had already decided that death could not separate him from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. You see these folks out here, in the that's been buried out here in the cemetery those that died in christ yeah. have not been separated from the love of christ Amen. they have not been separated death cannot separate you from god's love right amen, amen. True. i know we fear death because it's something we haven't faced yeah it's scary to our flesh right but death that's why paul could say to be absent from the body be to be present with the lord because he knew that even death could not separate him from the love of God that he found in Christ Jesus. Amen. You see, Paul, before he was saved, was a persecutor of the church. He killed Christians. Right. Amen. So if any man could relate to God loving you when you were unlovable, it was this man. Amen. Right. And he wanted you to know, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've done in the past, God, oh, God's arms are open for you today. He loves you. Amen. Right. And Paul said, will any of these things separate us? Even brings it down to death. Death won't even separate you from this love All right. that we're talking about today. Come on. 
even death, even Nero's chopping block would not separate Paul from this love. I don't understand this love. I can't explain it to you how God would take on the robe of a mortal man and would go through what he went through on the cross of Calvary. And even before he got to the cross, when he stood at the whipping post and he took the stripes on his back and they ripped his back to shreds. I can't understand that today, why he would do that. You might be able to almost understand it if you were doing it for a loved one, if you were doing it to save your children. But how about for a world that would spit on you, that would call you a blasphemer, that would call you the devil. How can you understand or even grasp the love that that takes? Come on. So the father gives his son. Why? Because of the love that he has for the world. And the son gives his life on the cross of Calvary. He stood before the judges, the Sanhedrin. He stood before the court for you. Amen. He walked the Via Della Rosa covered in blood with his, with his flesh ripped to shreds by the cat of nine tails that they used right. for you. He laid himself down on the cross and nobody killed him. He laid his life down. Right. He said, no man takes my life. I lay it down freely. True. He didn't stop there though, did he? If I lay it down, I'll take it up again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He did that for you. Yeah. He laid there as they drove the spike nails into his hands and his feet. Come on. And they raised that old wood up and dropped it in the hole in the ground and every bit of his being pulled down on those spikes. He did that for you. Amen. Now tell me you understand that today. I know some of you might think you're pretty good. You ain't that good. Right. Amen. There may be times in our life we thought we were pretty good. We ain't that good. Absolutely. And he didn't stop there, Brother Dave. Yeah. As he hung there on the cross with blood running in his eyes, Brother Bill. Yeah. Every ounce of strength it took just to get another breath. Uh -huh. And you know what he does, Brother Bobby? He prays for you. All right. He looks down at the soldiers that pierced his hands and his feet and are gambling over his clothes. Yeah. Those that spit on him. Those that called him a blasphemer. Those that laughed in his face. Those that were saying, if you're king of the Jews, get yourself down off of that cross. Come on. And he looks down at them. And with, with this love, sister, that I can't explain. Mm. Brother Bill, he looks down and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He could have called 10,000 angels right. and wiped every human being off the face of the earth, and he would have been justified in doing so. Amen. He could have called lightning down from the sky. Say, oh, he was just a man. Yeah, but he was God, too. Yeah. When he stood before the tomb of Lazarus, he was God Amen. in the flesh. When he raised up blind Bartimaeus, he was God in the flesh. Amen? And he looks down. After surrendering his power, he looks down and he prays for a world that is lost and undone. And he paid that price for you and for me. And Paul's wanting us to know, do you really think after paying that great of a price for something, He's just going to quit loving you one day. He's just, he knew what kind of mess you were before he saved you. Amen. Right. He knew what kind of mess you were. And I don't want to hinder your self-esteem any. But he knew what kind of mess you were. Right. Most of us were a mess. Amen. Most of us ain't, ain't too much better today. <laughs> as far as our old flesh goes. But he loved us enough. To give his life. And Paul's wanting us to know that. That distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or death. Cannot separate you from the love of God. God loves you. Amen. I don't understand it. But it's there for you today. Yes. It's there for you today. Amen. Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? Mm. He went to his daddy one day and he said. And I'm paraphrasing of course. Give me all the money that's due to me. And in essence, what he was saying, Brother Dave, was, you're dead to me. Amen. I see he wasn't supposed to get it until his daddy died. Right. So he says, oh man, you're dead to me. Give me my money. I'm out of here. I'm tired of your rules. I'm tired of your regulations. I'm tired of you telling me what to do. How many mamas and daddies heard that for? <laughs> I'm tired of you telling me what to do. 
Yeah. <laughs> so his father, I'm sure it caused him great pain. But he gives him his share of the inheritance and he takes off. And he goes and he finds him some good time friends. You know, it's not hard to find friends when you got money. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. They come around like flies on a dead carcass. Exactly. Amen. So he goes and he finds him some friends. He hooks up with some people and they, they enjoy some riotous living. Yeah. See, you can enjoy sin. See, it's fun for you to boot scoot on Saturday night now. Right. Amen. Sleep in bed on Sunday morning with a hangover and not go to church. It's fun now. Yeah. It won't be so much fun later. Amen. Amen. There's still a hell. Yes, sir. Hey, I know you don't hear it much in church anymore, but there's still a hell. Amen. We preach about heaven and I love heaven. Yeah. But if there's a heaven, as sure as there is a heaven, there is a hell today. Yes. Amen. Amen. And rejecting this love that I'm talking about today is what causes you to go to hell. Right. Amen. Come on. So this man rejects the love of the Father and he takes the money and he goes. Mm -hmm. And he spends it. Amen. Come on. His bucket had a hole in it. Right. He lost everything he had. Everybody spent up all his money and whenever they did, they come to him they say, Hey, buddy, yeah. give me some money so I can go get another bottle. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have no money. See you. <laughs> See you later. We're going to go yeah. find somebody that does got some money. So he finds himself in probably the lowest degrading place that he could be other than dead. Right. Finds himself feeding hogs. Amen. Unclean. Amen. Amen. Unclean swine. Yeah. He's out there in the hog pen with them. Right. He's so hungry he wants to eat the husk they eat. Yeah. But thank God he came to himself. See, that's what God's waiting for. Right. He's waiting for you to come to yourself today. Amen. Amen. You think you're running from him. You think you've got away from him. But he's just waiting for you to come to yourself. That little tug you feel at your heart, that's him dealing with you. That little pull that you feel, that's him. That's his love dealing with you. Amen. Right. He can wash his hands of you and let you go and be justified in doing so. But his love won't let him. Right. His love won't let him. Amen. He could have let Adam and Eve right. die and just that would be the end of it. Yeah. Whenever he said, don't eat of this fruit, and they ate of the fruit, but his love yeah. wouldn't let him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. True. When Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, it was God's love that spared mankind. Right. The Bible says the thoughts of man was on evil continually. Mm -hmm. Amen. They were wicked. Right. It grieved God that he created them. Amen. And he said, I'll wipe them off the face of the earth. Yes. But his love intervened exactly how many times has god's love intervened for you you're lost you were lost you were undone you may still be lost and undone and you were only just a second away from death but god's love intervened because he don't want you to go to hell see Amen. it's not his will that any should perish right so god's love intervenes and stops mankind from being wiped off the face of the earth right god's love intervened that day on calvary amen because mankind was separated from God and there was no way. Yeah. And Jesus said, I'll go. I'll be the way. I'll be the sacrifice. Right. John saw him as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He came. He surrendered his life, his power, his majesty for you. Why? Because you were such a good person? No, because he loves you. And I don't understand right. that. I don't know if anybody else... You may think you understand it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if anybody else here... Gets where I'm coming from. I don't understand it. If anything confuses me, God loving me confuses me. Amen. God loving the world so much that He would give the best that He had so that they wouldn't go to a devil's hell. That confuses me. So the prodigal son finds himself in the hog pen and what's he do? He comes to himself and he says, I'm going to go back to the father's house. Yeah, Because as much as he hated facing his father, he knew that his father was a merciful man. Maybe he'll let me just be a servant. I'll have to be his son. Amen? Right. So he starts going back home. But guess what? The day that he left, Brother Bill, Daddy turned the porch light on. Woo! Hallelujah! My, my, my! Daddy turned the porch light on, and he hadn't turned it off. Amen? Daddy's sitting out there in the rocking chair, watching the road. 
Yeah. Looking for that son. Amen. Why? He'd have been justified if he'd have just went about his business and forgot about him. He'd have been justified if he'd have just wrote him off as being dead and never had anything to do with him again. But he's out there and he's watching. He said, oh, wait a minute. I see somebody coming. And maybe he remembered the way that he walked. Maybe he remembered the way that he carried himself. But he said, I believe, Brother Bill, I believe it's my son. Oh, I believe it's my boy. And instead of running down there, and his son probably saw him come running. He probably, oh, no. He's mad. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes people run at you when they get mad at you. Amen. Some of you people have been in a bar fight no more about that than I do. <laughs> they get mad at you. They come at you like a bull. Yeah. So he sees daddy coming and he's thinking, oh me. And his daddy would have had every right, Brother Bobby, to walk up to him and say, you get out of here and don't you come back. Mm-hmm. You're not welcome here. You are dead to me. Yeah. But the father's love got in the way. Oh, I wish somebody would help me preach today. The Father's love got in the way. He didn't find judgment. He found love. That's what you'll find today. I know you're afraid to go back to God because of what you've done. I know you feel like that God is mad at you. No, 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 no. God loves you as much today as he did when you left the house. Amen? You may have spent all you had on riotous living, but the Father, the porch light's on and the Father's waiting. Amen? And whenever he saw him coming, he run down there and he put his arms around him. The Bible says he put his arms around him. And he kissed him. And he said, my son that was dead, now is alive. Right. Brother Scott, he was lost, right. and now he's found. Amen. And you'll notice that the only one that said anything about mm. what he had done yeah. was his old judgmental brother that was out there. Right. Because God's, the Bible says love covers a multitude yeah. of sin. Amen. Somebody slip up your hand today and thank God for his love. Yeah. And Paul wanted us to know all the way over here in the book of Romans. You may have spent everything you had. You may find yourself rolling in the hog bin, but God still loves you. Nothing can separate you from God's love for you. Because while we were yet sinners, what did He do? He died for us. He didn't wait for you to get good enough. There's my notes. It don't matter. I done left them anyway. He didn't wait for you to get good enough. Yeah. I don't understand the love of God, but I'm here to tell you today that it is waiting for you. Amen. He stands with arms open wide for you. True. There's a story that most of us have heard on the radio, and I don't have my notes to go by, so I'll mess it up. But It sums it up pretty good the way that I feel. It says that in the city of Chicago, it was wintertime, and there was a little boy standing on the street corner selling newspapers. And he'd been living in a box down the street and in the alley. and It was real cold. And he went up to a police officer and he asked him, Sir, do you know where I might find a warm place to be tonight? Maybe something to eat? The police officer tells him, Go down to that big white house there on the corner and knock on the door. And whenever they open the door, just say John 3.16. Just say John. If I could have y'all's attention for just a minute, I'd surely appreciate it. See, souls hang in the balance. All right. He said, you go down here to the house and you tell them John 3.16. And the little boy didn't understand it, but he's hungry and desperate enough. He did it. Right. He walked up the steps and he knocked on the door and there was a woman that came. and He looked up at her and said, John 3.16. And she said, well, come on in here. She takes him in. She puts him in a big rocking chair in front of the fireplace and she goes off to do something. And he's thinking, John 3.16. I don't understand it, but it sure does make this cold boy warm. She come back in a few minutes. She said, are you hungry? He said, well, I can stand a bite. I haven't ate in a couple of days. She takes him into the kitchen and sets him down at the table, and there's like there is here today, a lot of food there. And he eats till his heart's content and his belly's full as it's ever been. And as he sits there, he thinks, John 3.16, I don't understand it. It sure does make a little hungry boy full. She comes and gets him and takes him upstairs, draws him a big tub of hot bath water. He hadn't had a bath. The only bath he ever had was at the fire hydrant whenever they clean him out. He climbs into that tub, and as he sits there, he thinks to himself, John 3.16, 
I don't understand it, but it sure makes a dirty boy clean. All right. After he has his bath, she takes him into the bedroom, and there's a big feather bed there, and she puts him in there and covers him up. And as he lays there looking out the window, as the snow comes down, he thinks, John 3.16. I don't understand it, but it sure makes a tired boy rested. The next morning, she wakes him up, takes him down, puts him in the front of that same table where he's eating, you know. After he gets his belly full, she takes him into that same rocking chair and she sets him down and she says, Son, do you know what John 3.16 means? He said, No, ma'am, I hadn't ever heard it until last night. And she gets the Bible down off of the mantle and she sits down in the floor in front of him and she opens it up and she reads the words, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That God sent His Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that through Him the world could be saved. All right. And she tells him about Jesus and he accepts the Lord. And as he sits there, he thinks, John 3, 16. I still don't understand it. But it sure makes a little lost boy found. All right. I can stand here today and tell you that I've been saved for 40 years. I've been preaching for 27. And I still don't understand it but it sure makes life worth living Amen. if you're out there today and you haven't experienced the experience of John 3 16 God's love yeah. or maybe you have experienced it before and you walked away from it like the prodigal son if we can for a few minutes brother Tyler come put the song in If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, and every one of you under the sound of my voice may be saved, and I hope you are. You may be right with God, and I hope you are. But if you're not, I would be slack in my obligation as a minister of the gospel to leave this place today without asking you, is your heart right with God? I don't think I have to convince any of you, Brother Johnny, that life is uncertain. You're here today. You may not be here tomorrow. This sister that they gave up on this week may outlive all of us. Right. Amen. As you walk across this graveyard, I guarantee you, you're not going to find that just old people were buried over there. Amen. Right. Maybe some babies over there. Right. We don't know whether we have tomorrow or not. If you would, bow your head with me and let's pray. That if there be one person here today that does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, you can find that love that I've been talking about today. Oh, I don't have to explain it to you. We don't have to understand it. We just have to accept it. Just accept His love. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, if there be one today under the sound of my voice, Lord, I've... As feeble as it was, Lord, I've delivered what you give to me. Lord, I know there's a million preachers that could do a better job. But God, if something is, that has been said has pricked someone's heart, oh God, don't let them leave this place without their heart being right with you. Lord, let your spirit draw we can do nothing without you. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, come down to this altar. If I could do it for you, I would. I could stand here and beg you and that's what I'm doing. Please, don't leave without your heart being right with God. And I found out a long time ago the altar is not just for the unsaved. If you're here today and you're going through something and you need a touch from the Lord, this altar is open. That's right. And if you don't want to get down on the grass, you can just come and stand. But if you're going through something today, if you maybe you have felt like maybe God don't love you, it seems as if you've been forsaken. This altar is open. It doesn't make me more of a preacher or less, whether you come or whether you don't. But if you need a touch today, or maybe you need a touch in your physical body, 
If you'll come down here, there's enough people here. We, could, we ought to be able to go over here and raise the dead. The power of God. He's still a healer, as we've heard testimony speak of today. Most of all, don't neglect the condition of your soul. If your heart's not right with the Lord, don't say, well, I'll get right later. Countless people in hell today was waiting for tomorrow to get right. Tomorrow never came. If you don't know the Lord or if you just want to pray or if you need a touch in your body, I'm going to let the song play one more time. I'm not going to drag it out. If you need something from the Lord today, maybe you want to stand in for somebody. They'd probably appreciate that. Maybe they can't be here themselves. I believe God is more than able Amen. to do abundantly above anything we can think or ask. Yes. We have a, what we call a prayer box sitting on our altar at the church. It has prayer requests in there and pictures. I believe in God so much, Brother David, that I believe that just those names sitting there on that altar in the presence of God moves God Amen. in those needs. That's right. I still believe in prayer cloths. Right. I still believe in laying on of hands. Amen. I still believe in people standing in for others. Right. Maybe you have lost loved ones today and they're not here. Mm. Would you bow your head with me today and let's pray for them? Pray that God will, because you wouldn't be here today had someone not stopped and prayed for you. Right. Let's pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray right now that you would touch, that you would move, Lord God, upon those that are lost and undone. Lord, maybe there are those out here in the that we can't see, Lord, that are not right here in the yard, that have heard this message. Lord, don't let it, don't let it leave. Don't let the enemy steal the seed. Oh, God, but let it take roots downward and bear fruit upward. Amen. Lord, I pray again if there are those here today that don't know you, if they don't make the decision today, Lord, I ask you to please have mercy on them. Have mercy on them. Let this word stick with them. Lord, I don't want these words to haunt them when they get into hell. I don't want them to look back and think, you know, I sure wish I'd have went to the altar that day. I sure wish I'd have went and prayed that day that preacher asked me to pray. Lord, let them get right before it's too late. Oh, Lord God, let the seed that's been planted, Lord, we'll plant it, let you water it and give the increase, Lord, of however you want to work it. We know your word will not return void. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let, help me sing this last verse before we close. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Do you know Him today? Please don't turn him away, oh Jesus, my Jesus. Without him, how lost I would be. Yes, without him, how lost I would be. One more thing. If you leave this life and go to hell, it won't be because God didn't love you. It'll be because you rejected the love that He does have for you. Amen. Aren't you glad that He loves us today? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for your attention and for listening to me. I pray that something that has been said or a song that has sung has blessed you. Give the Lord a hand today.